Welcome to the Spice 110 Motorcycle Review Marathon Series. When I review a bike for an extended amount of time, I make several videos. What I'm doing in this series is taking all those videos and putting them back to back so you can watch them in one sitting. If you enjoy the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to help support this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon, links in the description. Also, if you'd like to see some reviews that don't have multiple videos, just one, check out my Motorcycle Reviews playlist. Enjoy! Hey everybody, it is with thanks to Triumph UK themselves that I have the Triumph Bobber 1200 on loan for uh, about 10 days, something like that. Um, I've had it for one day and I've done a, few, a couple of short rides because the weather's been terrible, but today is the first opportunity I've had to get out and try it in the country roads. Now this is my first ride, this is me just jumping on the bike, my instant emotional feeling about it, things that jump out at me, things that I just, you know, I notice and want to talk about. The review, which comes at the end of the time I've had this bike, is the proper video where you get all the ins and outs of what's good, what's not, any little things I don't like, any things I do like, you know, it's, this is the emotional side that will be the full on actual review. Uh, it's a real shame that my first rides get way more views than my uh, reviews because there is way more information in the review compared to this. But, but it is what it is. I can't really change the way that people watch videos. I'm just glad that you do. But I would ask if you do enjoy the videos, please hit that like button. It would help me a lot. Okay, so a few things to point out before we get going. Uh, it is a twin 1200cc. It produces about 77 brake horsepower and 106 newton meters at uh, 4000 RPM. So 1,200 cc's and 77 brake horsepower is not a lot. My XJ6 uh, diversion has got 600 cc's and it's got 78 brake horsepower. So it's actually got the same amount, even though this has got double the, uh, double the displacement. But this has got a ton of torque. 106 newton meters from 4,000 RPM. One last thing before we get going. The exhaust run on this is actually really clever. Uh, this is Euro 5, it in fact exceeds Euro 5, and you might be like, well, where is the catalytic converter in that exhaust system, given that this is mirrored on both sides? The truth of it is, and this has been done very slightly, uh, the pipe comes out of here, goes down here, it then goes into a catalytic converter onto the bike and meets up with the other side doing the exact same thing. It then comes out the catalytic converter, back round into this tube here, and then out the exhaust. This section in here, there's no pipe. That to get around the problem of you know needing catalytic converter on this style of bike, it's fantastic. You can't see the cat. I mean, you kind of can through there, and I mean, if you come from the front here, you know you can actually see it down there. But from from a few feet, it's just not something you notice. Your eye just passes over it. It wasn't until I suddenly thought, "Where's the cat?" that I looked at the exhaust closely. Uh, Twelve liter tank, which I believe is bigger than previous years' uh, bikes which people will be pleased about. Side mounted ignition, of course. Slightly wobbly side mounted ignition, but it's on rubber mounts, that's why it moves. As for modes and tech and buttons and things like that, um, I do think that these possibly could have been a bit more retro -y rather than just very plastic, grey plastic. It does, I mean, it fits in okay, but I feel like with all the extra effort that's been put on this, I mean, they even put like what looks like brass bits down here and there's things like that. You'd expect these to be a little bit more if you know what i mean but anyway it's got the traction control system the basic triumph traction control system where you just have road and rain not lots of other different things it's just road and rain um there is cruise control on this not that i'm really interested in that it's got some basic information here like trip and average mpg and that sort of stuff average has been 55.5 miles to the gallon if you're wondering uh, and i think i was saying i have a 54 mile range also to note that this is on a quick release on the back it looks like a, a push bike seat post quick release you know or wheel quick release and you can fold it down and up depending on the angle that you want enough talking let's get riding because you've got to hear this thing first things first i am not really into cruisers or or bobbers or, or any of these this style of bike it's never really been my thing i mean i love anything with two wheels it's better than something with four wheels no matter what it is but i you know the the style of these bikes has never really grabbed me but when i saw this one i thought you know what that actually looks really nice that's it's because every bobber and things like that that i see there's always something about the design that i just don't like it just i don't know i don't know if it's too try hardy too shiny too 
to mm, I don't know what I don't know it's it just doesn't sit right with me this thing looks cool this has got back end like a 1940s 1950s bobber you know it's it's got a mix of what looks like a retro old bike but beefed up in a very triumphy way I have never been in fifth or sixth gear on this bike. I'm currently in fourth, which it absolutely doesn't need to be in. Uh, but I'm doing 55 at 2,850 RPM. This has got such a long gearbox on it, but it's because it's got that torque and it means that you can just cruise so smoothly. Uh, the ride on it is very nice. Um, it's actually really comfortable. I'm, I'm 6'4 and about 15 and a half stone. And I fit on this perfectly. I thought this little, uh, you know, this little cup seat, flying seat, would be maybe very uncomfortable, but it's actually really comfortable. Uh, the position's really nice. I'm nice and upright. Uh, the grips are really chunky and fat, uh, and that's something I do like. The levers on this are that thick, I'd call cruiser-style lever, you know, and it's just a bit thick and rounded. I don't really like that style of lever I really don't if I'm honest I prefer something that's a little tighter and I can get my finger around but I totally get why it's on this bike oh the suspension is quite firm still but that bump gets every Triumph I've ridden in fact it gets pretty much every bike I've ridden apart from a DR and a couple of other things oh, oh, oh. see what I mean this is what this bike's about yeah, it's got the torque assisted clutch so the clutch itself actually is very light i'm worried about scraping the pegs because i'm getting very close here every time i lean this thing over it's only a matter of time before i do actually touch one of them down and then i'll know the limit oh it's pretty wet down here not too bad yet This has got a very strong dead ahead feel to it, you know, uh, because it's been raked out for this style of bike. So it feels different to corner. You have to really uh, sort of lean it in corner from the middle of the bike. But, but that torque! Aha! God, the vibe. The vibrations in these bars when it's a high RPMs make stuff in the mirrors just turn into blurry dots. They also turn into much smaller dots. But it's not ridiculously quick. This isn't savage, savage speed. It's just talky. And as I say, because it's got that long gearing and all this torque, you really don't need to uh, change gear much. You can just sit in like second here, for instance, and I can do 30 miles an hour, but I can also open it up, even uphill, and it picks up. This is a question from my patrons, as uh, the way that I work things, this bike will be back for Triumph before the first video goes live to everyone on YouTube. Uh, patrons get videos, it says, uh, I, I promised them it's three, three days early, but it ends up being about a week or so, depending on how things are going. So it's very often that I can't answer questions from the YouTube audience because the bike's already gone back. But the patrons can ask me questions. So patrons, if there's anything you want to know about this bike that I can do a video on uh, or something like that, comment away and let me know. I'm doing like 27 miles an hour in second gear. It's doing 2,500 RPM-ish and it's perfectly smooth. It's just the points that you accelerate that you get some proper rumbles. I mean, if you didn't have them, it wouldn't be right, I would have thought. It feels nice to ride quite slowly, and that is a really good selling point for a bike in the UK now. I was only thinking about this a little while ago, about how when I started doing bike reviews, doing the top speed runs, like on the 125s, was relatively easy, you know, uh, because the traffic wasn't too bad. In recent years, it's gone from like being able to do one or two runs up the dual carriageway to get my top speed, uh, to having to do six or seven because the traffic is that much or is just moving that slowly. 
And then I'm only trying to get up to like 70 mile an hour. As I say, these are like one, two, five cc bikes. Having super fast sports bikes, I mean, I know if you're into sports bikes, you're not gonna want one of these. I mean, some people are just, you know, I'll have anything. But I think we can all like things, but the one thing you want to own normally is the thing that your, your heart's closest to. Like, I own a DRZ 400 SM because I absolutely love supermotos. I mean, I hardly ever get to ride the thing. It just makes me sad as it sits in my cab. <laughs> Don't worry, it's getting fixed. It'll be back soon. Here we go. Slow down a little bit. He's <laughs> the tiger. Feels so good. And this this low down lean to it, I and mean, you don't feel like you have a lot of lean, but it just feels fantastic. It's got good engine braking on it. Not savage like I might have expected from something with you know 1,200 cc's and only two cylinders, but it's it's pretty good. I mean, I mean the reason it's lessened is because of that torque assisted clutch. The price of this bike is around 12 grand. If you want one of the special paint jobs like this one, it's an extra 350 quid. Uh, they also do a, a pack that's got some, some high cables and, some, uh, and a seat and a few other bits and pieces on it. It's about an extra grand. So, you know, if you want all the bells and whistles, well, there is a lot more bells and whistles actually that Triumph offer. If you go to the website, you can configure the bike for how you'd want and see what price it would be. But basically you're looking at around 12 grand if you want the base one. And if you want to do some, uh, you know, some customizations through the Triumph options, you know, maybe 14, depending on, you know, if you go nuts, I mean, you probably can go higher than that. But I don't know if you want to do that with this. This, this is about old school simplistic biking. And look at this, I'm not even touching the clutch, I'm in first. No one go right, 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 no one go right. Go right. Go right. Uh, oh no, 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 you're the worst one that could have come down here. No, I'm not sitting behind that camper van and having it ruining this road for me. <laughs> I'll wait here for a minute. Got to change up the view. Probably look pretty cool. My first impression to this bike are that, you know, I'm not really into this style of bike, but I thought this one looked really good. So I thought, let's take it for a ride. And I'm, I'm loving it. I'm really, really enjoying this bike very much. Uh, you know, if you don't have to do, I mean, I wouldn't want to do like long, long distance on this thing necessarily, uh, but you could, I mean, it's, it's comfortable. The only thing is it's got absolutely zero wind protection, but then that's just the style of bike that it is. Is 60 mile an hour going up this hill is 3,000 rpm. Sixth gear, 60 mile an hour, 2,500 rpm. Like it barely feels like it's running. That is too high a gear. I really do feel like this could have they could have shortened the gearing a little bit. I'm gonna have to stick some fuel in this the way home because I've got uh, about 38 mile range remaining. Uh, and it'd be interesting to know what it's like to ride this bike with a full tank of fuel opposed to a quite empty tank of fuel because obviously that aids to the weight being low down. Oh, I shouldn't mention the weight actually. This thing weighs 251 kilos. 251 kilos. It does not feel anywhere near that heavy. 
in the slightest. I mean, I haven't tried picking it up off the ground, obviously, but it doesn't feel anything like that. Well, I think I'm going to call into my first ride here because I do feel like I now understand this bike much better than I did this morning. This morning, I'd only ridden it on 30 mile an hour roads and I was enjoying cruising around on it. Now I've ridden this in some country roads, you know, I've got it through some corners, I've used the power. I think it's great. I think some people might say it's lacking power a little bit. For the 1200cc, having, you know, less than 80 brake horsepower is not a huge amount. And 106 newton meters of torque is, is a lot, admittedly. But equally, it's, it's, it's not so staggeringly high that, that you know, it's, it's exceptional. But I don't think that's what this bike is about. You know, as I say, this is about cruising. This is about comfortable riding. This is about using the torque. And I do love using it. So yeah, if you found this video interesting or useful, please do hit that like button. I would really, really appreciate it. Very few people remember to do that, even though they definitely remember to watch my videos. And it would really help me if you could actually remember to hit the like button. I mean, I normally get less likes on my videos than people who pay through Patreon to help support it. And if you want to be one of those people that help support this channel and gets the videos early and stuff like that, then consider joining my Patreon. It costs as little as about a pound a month. Gives you all sorts of benefits. Member of the Discord, you can come talk to me in there. You know, I'm playing Call of Duty and stuff with my subscribers all the time. Uh, every day we're chatting. So if you'd like to be part of that, check out the link in the description. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, you join me on a Sunday cruise. This is just a little ride. I'm going out just to put a few more miles on the bobber that I've got on loan from uh, Triumph UK at the moment to make some videos and review. Uh, but yeah, I've just got to get miles on it. The weather, while I've had this bike, has been a nightmare. It's been going between extremely windy and peeing the rain uh, to quite nice weather. So I'm, I'm having to try and choose the moments I can and ride where I can to get as many miles on this as I can in the, in the time that I have it. I discovered from watching back my first ride, I am as close to these pegs touching the ground as I can get without them actually touching the ground <laughs> in places. I'm amazed I haven't actually hit them yet. I seem to have just picked up on as far as it wants to lean. But then again, I'm not trying to push it. I don't want to <laughs> you know, drop this thing. I've just realized that I sometimes don't show the bike in the video and some people get mad at me because they're like oh i want to just see what it looked like well there you go that is a triumph bobber 1200 you could have looked online at pictures but it's fine i get it you want to just see around it yeah it's a, it's a it's a very nice bike actually not exactly the most practical bike in the world well actually i mean it depends on what you're trying to do with it i do want to do a bit of distance on it that's one of the videos i'm going to do when i get a day in nice weather which should be tomorrow i'm going to jump on this thing maybe go up to goodwood go around that area and just get a decent amount of miles on it in a day just to see what the comfort's like that'd be fun to get up that way also through the goodwood tunnel this thing should sound amazing i, I hadn't really thought about it but some people are like what video are you going to do to celebrate hitting 100,000 subscribers when it happens in the next few months uh and i really don't know um by that point i will have uploaded over 1800 videos over uh, 10 11 years I don't know how I'm supposed to represent that in a single video. I mean, I could just say thank you to you, but you know I'm very grateful anyway. I, I've, had a, I've had quite a lot of suggestions, and I'm afraid a lot of them are a little bit sort of like, either like samey or equally, I don't necessarily want to look back to where I was before. There were some very bad times back then. I'd rather look forward. Um, and and uh, yeah, you know what I mean. This is a fun bike for that. You know, for me, the most sort of memorable and the best things that have happened through doing vlogging, I mean, of course, being able to do this as a job is absolutely incredible, but the thing that's filled me with the most joy out of all of it has been how many people have been inspired to get on a bike from, uh, from my videos. It's, it's in the hundreds at this point. And, and uh, I had a message on Facebook a little while ago uh, from a, a dad who said that his daughter was very nervous about doing a CBT, but she watched through my training videos and it, it gave her a much better understanding of, understanding of what was required on the day. Uh, 
which meant that she basically passed with no issues to my staff, if, if I remember it correctly. <laughs> and he's considering going and doing it too. Yeah, it's a little bumpy up this road, isn't it? But yeah, that message, that, that probably made them smile. You know, I say people are like, oh, well, you know, t tell your story about the last 10 years in a, in a 10 minute video. That's what they're basically getting at. If you've watched this channel that long, I really do feel like there is way more that's gone on. Uh, you know, things to move past, stuff that's happened, challenges, things that I've done. This is way too much to cover in a video like that. Um, that's what the videos on the channel are for. I, as I say, I don't really know what to do. Nothing so far has really jumped out at me. Someone said, do a parachute jump. Turns out, from what my understanding, I'm too tall, sorry, I'm too heavy for my height to be able to do it. Not that I really want to jump out of a plane if I'm completely honest with you, but, you know. I don't know, I don't know. It's very surreal, I, I don't, I don't know, this doesn't feel very real to me at the moment to uh, even have to sort of, you know, do anything towards that happening. It's been such a thing of like, yeah, that'll never happen, or if it does happen, it'll be in a long bloody time. Well, it has been a long bloody time. Uh, I think I'll go this way. Well, actually, maybe I've changed my mind, maybe I'll go around this way. God, I'm getting so close to scraping this bag. Oh, this is so pleasant, this bike. That's the thing this bike is all about. It's got some impracticalities and stuff because, you know, it's got one seat, it's a bobber, basically. But it's the riding feel of it. It's, it's really quite special. It's quite nice. Bargain booze. <laughs> Don't even pretend it, do you? You just, just go straight for it. What is it? It's cheap booze. How can I help you? I'd like your largest, cheapest bottle of booze, please. Any particular type. Uh, brown booze. Maybe some clear booze. But definitely some brown booze. And maybe a peanut. Why am I riding this around in first? Oh, it's because it just sounds really nice like that. Also, second is a little bit sort of low in the revs. Oh no, not more diesel. I have an electric scooter and he is keeping up. Check out the speed. electric scooter now buzzing behind me and he keeps going from my left mirror to my right mirror to my left mirror to my right mirror choose where you're gonna be my dude and don't you even think about trying to overtake oh you could now if we all slow down okay left mirror that's what's wrong with people if you're going to be on an electric scooter right and you're gonna be behind a vehicle make sure that you're in their you know seeing spot not in their blind spot and don't keep jumping from left mirror to right mirror because a lot of people will go oh they're not there anymore slam straight into you because you've gone on the left you know think about what you're doing and be a bit more predictable about it you know you're the sort of person who wants these things to become legal don't ride it in a way that's going to make them definitely become illegal or them not legalize them fully because no one seems to be able to ride them properly not saying all this is a lovely sounding twin, it has to be said. It's so smooth. It's just so wholesome sounding, if you know what I mean. It's so warm and just soft and pillowy sounding, but with, with some proper like chest feel in it. Uh, no weird noises like you get on the BMWs, like the R9T. That thing that makes a few weird noises from the engine because I think this is a boxer engine. Um, well, they're not like throwing shade at the R9T because it makes a few weird engine noises when it has a boxer engine. But you know what I mean? It's like pillowy, marshmallowy, fluffy, fluffy. It's like a big grizzly bear. It's all fluffy, but it's still a beast. Although actually this beast is not quite as scary as it looks because it hasn't quite got the power that it looks like or you think it might have. Okay, it is fine, you're an ambulance. If you're gonna hurt anyone, at least you're the one I wanna be hurt by. Oh no. 
I just realised I'm going to go down the bumpy road on this. That's going to be a real suspension test. <laughs> Not too bad, not too bad. Oh. The I, was, I think the front could be stiffer on this, but actually I don't think I'd want it to be. Turn any bend into a corner. <laughs> Uh, you definitely do find yourself doing that when you're stuck in traffic, you know, or on slower bikes. It's like, you've got to try and turn any corner into something a bit more interesting. Laundry land. Service laundry at its best. Wasn't that the place that was painted black before and it was a strip club? Or is that somewhere around here? I can't remember. I would love to hear this thing without the catalytic converter on it and some straight pipes, basically but I think it would be ridiculously obnoxious. This is actually really nice. It sounds loud enough that people can hear you, but it's not overly loud. You know, it's got a good tuned sound to it without being excessively noisy. Yes, I do believe the bikes can be too loud, even though I do believe in the whole, like, let's, not, let's not get into the loud pipes things again. You know, you, I have a video on that. Well, kind of. It's a video called Sound of Silence. It's talk about electric bikes, but it also covers live, loud pipes saves lives. What was that guy screaming at? You never know in Portsmouth. It could be someone talking to someone, someone saying something to you, some nutcase. I really hate it when people approach junctions that quick. Indicate, and then we know where you're going. Miraculous. What's going on here? Are they actually going to have some some organised event? I have no idea what it is. What is going on today? Oh, is this some sort of kite festival? I mean, it's a good day for it. Wait, it's like an old west town has been built down there. Like an old west street. What on earth is that all about? That's, that's one of the disadvantages of a bike like this. <laughs> I can't see over anything. I have to stand up and then I can see over everything. Not putting my feet down. Not putting my feet. No, no, no. Damn it. Oh, it looked like an old west town because of the shape of the stores, but there's burger and fries, donuts, hog roast. It's like some food stuff and a lot of kites so is this like the food and kite festival ah indication seven years after it happened there is a panda panda look there is a panda Could you scooch over a little bit? Could you scooch over a little bit? No. There ain't no scooching going on here, is there? Come on. Oh, we were all there one day. Get away from me, H&M bag. good to see people actually out training rather than just being on a waiting list. <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot of people watching this going, oh, too true, Spicy, too true. <laughs> I've been sat on a waiting list now for X amount of forever, uh, and that's just for my Mod 1. I then have to wait for another load of X amount of forever to get to Mod 2. I feel pretty bad for people because, like, when I did my direct access, it was in less than two weeks from, like, booking it to it being done basically. 
I just realised with all this traffic, this has kind of been like a city test. Um, the engine gets quite warm, but because it's so open, it's not too bad. And on today, where it's a little bit chilly, uh, it's actually quite nice. It's warming my shins. And if it's too hot, you kind of open your legs up. And if it's, you want it nice and warm, you close them up. It's, it's a good system. It's like a bowl warmer, but with, with ventilation and uh, thermostatic control with the legs. opposed to my XJ6, which just cooks them. And although this bike is a bit of a long boy, uh, it's not too wide. It's no wider than the bars. So as long as you know your, your bars can go through, you can fit through. Uh, the bar and mirrors, you know, mirrors need to be on a bike to sell it, really. Um, you don't need it for the MOT. I mean, yeah, they work. They don't make it that much wider. I guess they're a good thing to have there. But I could see a lot of people taking those off. Okay, well, I have to say, as just a little jolly around town, I've actually learned quite a lot about this bike that I didn't realise. I, mean, I, know, I know about the temperature on it, I know about it in traffic, filtering, all that sort of stuff. That was actually very, very useful for my, uh, for my review. And also, it was fun, because I'm just out on a bike, riding around, having fun. This is my happy place. It can also be my workplace. And when you're doing the reviews, that can be quite a stressful video because, you know, you've got to try and make sure you cover all the information and get it all right. This sort of video, bam, I'm just riding around talking crap. And also, I've been able to answer that question of does this bike ride that much differently when it's got a full tank of fuel versus an empty one? And the answer is no. Not really. All right, no friends then. Christ. If you could hit that like button for me, I would appreciate it very much. If you are new here or you're not new here and you're just not subscribed yet, can you please help with that? I would also appreciate it, because I'm on my way to 100k. Uh, and as I say, it's uh, it's been a long time coming. 18, about 1,800 videos is going to be by the time that I hit 100k. Uh, and in that time, roughly, I will have still uploaded a video every 2.2 days on average. One video every 2.2 days for 10 to 11 years. That's a, that's a pretty big achievement. Anyway, until the next one, bye-bye. Hey everybody, as you can see I'm out on the Triumph Bobber 1200 that I have on loan from uh, Triumph UK at the moment to do some videos and review on. Um, today I'm just coming out to the country roads because I wanted to do a few miles on this to see what the comfort was like and stuff like that. But so far today has not been going great. So this morning I stuck a pick under one of my fingernails, like you know what you use for getting seals out. A good, you know, probably eight millimetres in. And then uh, on the way I'm riding down here, something smacks me in the chest really hard. And I was just thinking, oh, that, that stung. Oh, that really, really did stick. And now it's moving. Can you see this? A bee went inside my jacket, stung me. Then when I stopped and threw all of my kit off to try and get the bee, um, it, it stung me in the hand. I mean, I, well, I know it stung me in the hand afterwards because that's where I found the stinger. So it stung me here, then stung me in the hand, and it was done. Um, let's not get into bees die when they sting you. That, that's not entirely true. Trust me, it was a bee. European honeybee. Bastard. So my idea of just arriving down here and starting up a nice video of like, hey, everybody, just down, chilling down here, starts with stabbed in the finger and stung by a bee twice. <laughs> uh, that's the nail that I got the pick under, and then it stung me between the fingers there. Anyway, as I say, my plan today was just to get some miles on this bike uh, to see what the comfort's like over time. I'm in Chichester at the moment, so I've been sat on a motorway for a little while. Um, and I'll talk about the gearbox in my review, but basically I have come, come, come to the conclusion that this bike should not have fifth or sixth gear. It's an easy fix, of course. You chuck a bigger sprocket on it, but, um, but yeah. But other than that, this has actually been very nice on the motorway. doesn't look like there's anything going on here at the moment. Well, not surprising really, the weather's been terrible. Oh, this is Goodwood racetrack, uh, is in motor circuit obviously. Very often if you come up here you can see lots of interesting things, but not today. The closest thing you're going to get is one McLaren sat in the corner. <laughs> 
Well, there is nothing going on here, so let's go for a little explore around. Yeah, boy. <laughs> it does sound good. I'm not sure how far into the sticks I dare go though, because I've just noticed I've only got three bars of fuel. Um, I, d I don't, you know, this bike does about 55 miles to the gallon and it has a 12 litre tank. I believe it's 12 litres. Um, but you do seem to get through fuel quite quickly on this, but then maybe that's because I've just been riding it a lot and enjoying it, and I'm romping around on it, which of course is going to eat the fuel. <laughs> go and I keep setting up my chuff. <laughs> I wonder how many people have straight lined this. Thirty-one miles. It's enough to go over there. Oh, I can't get anywhere near them. Pheasant. Pheasant. Oh, actually, no, it's a partridge. It's a red leg partridge. I, I don't know this sort of back area too much of Chichester. I've done this a few times. I can go this way as long as I go up that way at some point. I tell you, sometimes when I'm lone by... Ow! The goddamn gnat in my eye! Yes, I said gnat. Ah! Oh, it's, it better not be a stingy one. Seriously, I was just about to say about <laughs> how some some bike loans. I just seem to have the worst luck with the weather. Oh no 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 no! It's not supposed to rain this afternoon. I hadn't looked up at those clouds. They look extremely dark. Right. Okay. I have a feeling I'm going to start heading back my way. Um, pretty sharpish. Get some fuel, get some more motor motorway miles done. Just wish I could actually see around any of the corners. There's the sunshine, this look amazing in bright sunshine. Uh, Guildford, Petworth. Do, 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 Guildford. I don't want to go to Guildford. I'll have to go to Chichester. <laughs> oh, this is very enjoyable. What I basically want to test today and find out is whether this flying sea is actually like is it comfortable over a long period of time i was in the saddle for a couple of hours yesterday and i did notice that my butt was starting to get a little bit sort of numb it hasn't got a huge amount of padding but it feels really comfortable i wouldn't want it to have more padding this if i'm honest uh, it might also be something to do with my back because i've got nerve damage in my back uh, and that can cause the lower part of my back to basically go numb so who knows so I thought do a few more miles today, see how it is. Oh, it looks like 
looks like I've got a ton of filtering ahead of me. Why? What's going on? I mean, or is this just the way that things are down this end now? Okay, get out of guy. A little bit more room, maybe? No, fine. Look in your mirror, look in your mirror, look in your mirror. Thank you. See, when I'm filtering, I look at what every person is eating. Is it in a McDonald's? I look in the mirror to see what every person's doing, to see if they're looking at me, what's going on in the car, do they look like they're paying attention, do they look like they're thinking about scratching their ass, like what, what's going on in there before I go past them. Yes, I know I'm very close to this truck, but I'm, uh, I'm going to get past it. Thank you, nice lady, for not only paying attention, but also giving me a little space. This thing is a filtering machine. It might be a long boy, but it's not a wide boy. Oh, yeah, I'm getting a little bit cocky here. Basically, I work on a basis which is that if there is a gap that a car could go to into, it probably is going to. But if it's too small for it to do it, then it probably won't. You know, so it's an easy rule to follow. Thank the people that actually see me coming and move out of the way. Now it gets even more dodgy when you start getting close to where people pick lanes. But there is no gaps for them to move to, so they can't do it currently. Yep. Look at the wheels. This isn't a how to filter guide, by the way. This just sort of sh shiz that goes on in my brain. And we're through a year. So the way this fuel cap works is you have to have it here and unlock it here and then it starts working. Okay, well that's interesting. That's interesting, I've just put eight litres in this which means I had four left and it was saying that I only had like 20 miles of range so I might be wrong about literage unless it might not have a 12 litre tank it might be a 10 I could have sworn they said it was a 12 but that doesn't make much sense how have they got 20 unless it's got a 2 litre reserve on it because it's got a smaller tank they're like I'll just give them a giant reserve and they won't run out if they don't run out they won't cry As it turns out, that five minutes stood in that shop was all I needed for my legs. They feel fine again now. I think I was just uh, cutting the circulation off slightly. So maybe a little bit more padding on this seat would be good, but I wouldn't want it to be massively over the top. So I don't think you'd ever get bored of that. It's not like it's stupidly, stupidly fast. It's just, it just pulls and it's got so much a vent to the sound and it, the way that it moves. I kind of found that the same way with the rocket. Uh, it, it felt stupendously powerful and fast. But when you look down, you're like, oh, I need to do 80. Right, so this is 70 in third and I'm at 4,400 RPM. Fourth? 3,600 RPM, it's 70. Fourth. Why has it got two more gears? 
like I'm now going to put it into sixth. Oh, let, hang on, let's do fifth, and it's chugging a bit now. 3002, sixth gear, 2850. Sorry, I've just looked around there. So, six gear, 70 mile an hour, 2850 RPM. It's barely running and it will chug if you open it up. I really do not understand this side to this bike. It is way, way too long in the gears. Do you know, I would have even said if they if they made it a five speed, I'd have been fine with that. Like, I like the gearing of the first couple of gears. I like it being long, but it's got enough that it still pulls off the line quick. But yeah, I, I definitely feel like this bike needs to be geared quite differently, or at least I would anyway. But then again, if you want to cruise at 90 mile an hour or 100 mile an hour, then I'm sure that would be great. But who's going to cruise at 100 mile an hour on a bike with zero wind protection? This is what I mean. It's just these few little things like, why would you do that if it's this? I don't know. It's an interesting one. I'm currently cruising at 60 miles an hour and I'm choosing to do it in third because the engine feels like it's about the right point and I've still got plenty of power. Now I can put it in fourth and I can do the same thing, but it's chugging as you can see. What this bike is though is a joy to ride, I will say that, you know, it's not perfect. It's got some things that I would want to change if it was mine, but it's very enjoyable. So what started out as a bit of a fail day, it was a nice ride. I got to do the testing I need to do. I've definitely drawn some more conclusions to my review. Uh, if you're interested in seeing my review, please hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to help support this channel, I would really appreciate it. Consider joining my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Just to put things into perspective, we're getting very close now to 100,000 subscribers. 0.3% of my audience, compared to my subscribers, is the people that make this channel possible. Those three, four hundred people are making the difference between, you know, what, what I would be earning through YouTube would not be enough to do this. Uh, with the help of them, it makes it, you know, enough that I can continue to do this. But more support is always welcome, so please consider that. Oh no! No one splash me. That would just end the day in an, a very bad... Don't you do it. Don't. 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 Wait, thank you. <laughs> I've been splashed so many times, that would have been the perfect end to this video. Yeah, everything's all right. Splash! <laughs> oh, I'm guessing it's uh, been raining while I've been gone. Have I got that lucky? Or has it just been that bad down here? Hey everybody, and welcome to my review of the Triumph Bobber 1200. Thanks to Triumph UK themselves who lent me this bike about 10 days ago to make some videos in this review on. So obviously I've made the first ride and I've also done a city test on this bike. But basically what I do is I make a series of videos which tests different features and functions of the bike to try and test it in as many different areas as I can to find out what this bike is good at, what it's not good at, pros, cons, all of that. And this is what this video is. I want to keep this simple because this is a simple sort of bike. So let's just start with some key figures. Uh, so it's the Triumph Bonneville 1200 2021. Uh, it's about 12,000 pounds. If you want some extras on there, you're looking at you know more like 13, 14, depending on how much you grab. But that's what it is. Uh, it is a 1200 cc, obviously. 
and it has about 77 brake horsepower and 106 newton meters of torque at 4,000 rpm. Uh, now, 77 brake horsepower from a twin 1200 is not huge numbers, um, and that's something that I think for some people might put them off slightly, but I really don't think it should because that power, or should we say the power that this bike has got with the torque, with the way it is, is pretty close to perfect. Now, a bobber obviously is a, a motorcycle which has been cut down, turned back, had everything removed that didn't need to be there, which is why you basically have wheels, an engine, seat and tank. Now, obviously, we're in the modern times, so you need to have a mud guard on it and you need to have, you know, lights and mirrors and things like that, which is not true to what a bobber really is. But other than what the legal things make them put on it, this is very much engine and very little else. So just take a closer look at the bike. As you can see, it's got big twin Brembo discs on the front. These are very good uh, brakes, obviously. This bike weighs 251 kilos when it's wet, so you really do kind of want to have good brakes on this. The lights, although they're pretty retro, are LED. Same for the headlight. And if we just come around here, you can see the Triumph design has been included in that, in this more sort of classic shaped light. Also note that the clocks, which is just this, has a quick release here that allows you to basically undo that and move the angle of the clocks as to where you want them to be. Easy. This is metal, not plastic, which is great to see, as is the uh, the rear. So obviously it's a water-cooled twin that's using the more sort of classic shape, engine shape of like the old Bonnevilles and things like that, uh, which does look very nice. The exhaust system on this is actually quite interesting because the pipe comes out of here, it goes into a catalytic converter which is hidden under the bike there, comes back out here and goes through the exhaust. There is no actual pipe in this piece here. Just be careful because this is hot round here, but this is basically a shroud that covers it. Um, very smart way of getting a catalytic converter into a bike. Obviously you've got side mounted ignition as these sorts of bikes do have and it's very traditional to do that. They've got some nice little brass accents on here and they've got a little brass looking uh, triumph plate on the back of the flying seat here which is like brushed aluminium underneath this seat is lovely i mean it could probably do with a little bit more padding um but that might ruin the design of it it's not bad for what it is and it looks lovely i really do think it looks good also using i believe it's this bolt and this bolt up here you can adjust the placement as in height and how far back the seat goes i haven't done that because this isn't my bike i'm not going to start pulling it apart but you can do that Unlike most bikes, we've got the chain on the right-hand side and you have the rear disc, which is a big old disc for a rear, or at least it looks that way, uh, on the left. You see, even the frame design on this is quite nice where it thins out into these sort of points to blend everything in together. Yeah, I think it looks nice. Uh, this paint job is about an extra 350 quid over the standard black tank, uh, but it is a very nice sort of satin finish. The rear suspension is this single shock underneath the seat here, and I can't actually see any adjustment on that, as in an adjuster ring or a screw or anything. I'm not gonna say it's not adjustable. Uh, I'll probably have to check that, but it appears from what I can see that it's not. I would say the front suspension is too soft because you can bottom it out and it gives a proper bang if you hit a reasonable size pothole. Uh, but at the same time, the way that it rides most of the time is nice that it's softer. Right, I'll just show you the controls and stuff and then we'll get out on the road because all the facts and figures on this bike really mean nothing. It is about the feel uh, and obviously that's the hardest thing to, you can't put that in numbers, you can only explain it and I'll do my best to explain it to you. But you have the info button here which basically gives you odometer, trip, average MPG, miles remaining and the clock and your rev gauge. Uh, indicators, high beam, low beam, cruise control, uh, horn, Kill switch and starter, mode button to change it between rain and road for the traction control, and that is it, rain and road. Uh, and then you've got your hazards here, which I have not switched yet, I'll go that way. Then on the display, you have your indicator lights, neutral light, high beam, low beam light, you have your speed around the outside, some warning lights across the middle, and then you've got a little LCD that's got a gear position indicator on it, your fuel gauge, and that, that's, that's basically it. It's very simple. Uh, torque assisted clutch, so the clutch itself is very light, I mean, one finger is not a problem on a 1200cc twin, that's pretty incredible. That is basically it, because this is a simple bike about simple motorcycling. <laughs> Yeah, it, it sounds pretty good. It's one of the really nice things about it, actually. Why am I indicating to pull away? <laughs> Habit.
Well, let's first things first. I'm six foot four and about 15 and a half stone, roughly. And this bike has actually been really comfortable for me. Even with this flying seat, the seating position is absolutely great. There's no limitations on my leg length because, you know, there are cutouts in the tank, but it's, it's not too much. And the upright position of it is just, it's very universal, is what I basically say. So as I was saying about the sound of this bike, it is absolutely lovely sounding. It's a very soft but powerful sound. You know, it's, it's a lot, very deep down, not overly loud, uh, but it gives the bike real presence and a lot of people notice it. And I will say that about this bike, and this happens with a few bikes, particularly if they're classic looking. You get members of the public come up to you and just want to talk to you about the bike. And this has had that. Now I've had several people come up to me and want to ask me questions about it. And interestingly enough, a couple of those were actually you know, like bikers one of the guys I was chatting to apparently he owns 22 bikes. He's got an old Bonneville and a few other bits and pieces amongst it. You know, I'm sure he's got some pretty awesome stuff in there he's not mentioning. Uh, but yeah, he, even he likes the, the modernization of the old bike. That sound is definitely a big part of what makes this bike so good at what it's good at. And it's the thing that it's so good at is feel. Enjoyable rider feel. You know, I've done roads that are much faster than this to just see what it was like and yes you can ride it pretty quick you have to be careful when you're leaning the thing over because you're going to get very very close to the peg scraping uh, but you can get it around a corner pretty damn quickly it's surprisingly good at that even for a 251 kilo bike because all that weight is very low down and i should also mention so is the seat so this bike is ideal for shorter riders it just flows from corner to corner lovely for 1200 cc's, 77 horsepower is not a huge amount. Um, 106 newton meters of torque from 4000 RPM is quite a bit, but if you're after an absolute powerhouse of a bike, I wouldn't say this was it, but I like it more for it because I can use the engine on this. You actually can romp around on this. However, that leads me directly onto my second criticism of this bike, which is again, not that bad actually, because you can fix it with a new sprocket. And that is the gearing on this bike is ludicrously long. If you watch some of my previous videos I've done on this, uh, and I assume that if you're really actually serious about buying one of these bikes, you will do that. 70 mile an hour in sixth on this is under 3000 RPM. In fact, I would say that even on a motorway cruising, you are unlikely to ever use sixth. Now, obviously I wouldn't want this bike to lose its long gearedness. So you have to, uh, you know, change gear every two seconds. However, I would like it to be just a little bit, a little shorter in the gears. So maybe you can cruise in sixth, but have the lower gears for pulling away. But then again, you'll probably find yourself using second all the time to pull away. So it's, you know, it is what it is. It's a criticism, but it's not that serious. You get this bike on a summer evening out in some nice national country speed limit roads, you know, and you just cruise. Smell the smells, enjoy the sound of the engine. I think you'll have quite an experience. This feels like very true, pure motorcycling. I know that sounds like some marketing spiel. Trust me, I will say anything I want about any bike. If I say something, I truly mean it. This bike feels like old school biking. Obviously the purist would go for the old Bonneville. But this, I think it still has a lot of qualities uh, to that. I have ridden an older Bonneville uh, it was a calf racer and it wasn't, you know, ancient, but yeah. Now being a 1200cc uh, and only having a 12 litre tank, you do have to fill it up reasonably regularly, uh, depending on what you're doing, obviously. And the long gearing may help with that too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you do find yourself, if you're actually riding it for a few hours each day, you're going to be filling it up once a day, pretty much. Uh, so I wouldn't say it was gas guzzling, but it does have a small tank for the size of engine it has. I mean, for example, my DLZ 400 SM has a 10 litre tank, but it's only obviously a 400, well, it's actually a 440, but let's not get into that. Very pretty evening. I know I'm talking about this as a cruising, non-performance sort of bike. It's, it's good at what it is, but it's still very good at pulling off a line, making a good sound, and making you feel good. I should have mentioned earlier on when I was talking about comfort and stuff, uh, having ridden this for a few hours each day, I did start to find that after about three hours in the saddle, I wanted to get up and have a little walk around. Uh, I have a bit of a bad back anyway. I wouldn't say this bike was any worse than most, but it's definitely got quite firm rear suspension. Again, not as bad as some other bikes, but the, the seat's so, you know, thin. 
but you don't get much padding and yeah I start to feel it in my back a bit uh, but it's not that bad but it's worth I would say it's worth trying one out and see how you find it okay, well, we didn't get to pull off the line and now I can't see a thing oh this is a terrible idea I'm still in second I'm still in second I'm still in second Now I want third. And it definitely pulls when it hits these gear, it really pulls. Oh, come on. You've got four wheels. Come on, clear path. Give me a clear path, please. Yes, thank you, person. Appreciated. I was only doing 70. See what I mean? It's got eventfulness, it's got power, it's got presence, but it's not stupid speeds. Now you open up a thousand cc sports bike in first and second. It's it's pointless. <laughs> you can't go that fast on the British roads. Okay, hang on, let's get it into six so you can see this. Okay, 60 miles an hour, 2,550 RPM. If I try and accelerate, it will do it, but it's got a bit of a rumble. Fifth, still got a rumble. Fourth, bit of a rumble. Third, there we go, that's where you want it to be. So as I say, although one of my criticisms earlier on is this doesn't have as much power as you might expect for a 1200, as you've just seen, it is enough but it's not too much, to the point that it's it's pretty perfect. I mean, yeah, sure, okay. Honestly, maybe if it had 100 brake horsepower, that might be a bit more like what I would maybe expect, but it's a twin, and it's got a ton of torque. And if that's, you know, if you want something with super high brake horsepower, well, then don't go for an engine which is known for having torque. <laughs> and I don't think necessarily a lot of that matters. If you want this sort of bike, it's probably got a lot to do with maybe the looks or the style or, even the heritage or anything like that. Um, it's not about the performance figures, it's not about all of that stuff. It's been interesting as well actually, while I've been doing videos on this bike, I've had some pretty big sections where I've just kind of, I'm not gonna say I got mesmerized and I'm not paying attention, I'm kind of super focused on riding, but I'm just enjoying the whole experience, like listening to the engine, feeling the road, smelling everything. It really, it takes you away from everything. And you can obviously get that from any motorcycle, but I think part of it comes from the ease of riding this. You know, you're not changing gear or anything like that. You're not, if you've got this sort of bike, you're not looking to get around a corner scraping knee or scraping peg necessarily, unless, you know, the feeling takes you, in which case it is a lot of fun to do. Cars are going a bit slow. And that's partly why I say this bike to me feels like pure motorcycling. It feels like a pure escapism. It feels like exactly what motorcycles were supposed to be for. Well, okay, motorcycles weren't necessarily supposed to be exactly for that. But you know what I mean. Well, the way that people see them now, it's generally about escapism. This sort of bike isn't really what you're going to use to commute. You could. You could definitely commute on this if, you know, and you could even do a bit of distance on it. This, this is what it's about enjoying the country you're driving through. Uh, you know, if, I know, this, as I say, the type of seat on this isn't ideal uh, as a touring bike, but I feel like on something like this, you're not gonna go as fast and you're gonna see more. You know, you're gonna actually pay attention to the road. You're not looking at the bike and worrying about what, what mode it's in or whether it's, it's this or that. You're just, it's a bike, it's getting you around, it's moving you, it's a moving chair. You know in the way that when you're traveling by train there's just something a little bit different about it about the way that you take in the place that you're going because you know it's there's windows you can get to look at you get to see the country around you okay this might be a bit idealistic because i'm thinking back to when i like went on old steam trains in <laughs> somewhere in the uk i don't know where it might be the watercrest line um but yeah it just you just felt like this is just an enjoyable journey and that's what this bike does. It makes enjoyable journeys, even short ones. As I say, lots of other bikes do that and this might only be something it does for me. But if it does it for me, it can do it for some of you too, I'm sure. This is what I mean about showing this bike in its best light. 
the evening light just makes this thing look beautiful. All the little bits of chrome pop, the black is nice and subtle. You get this sort of nice warm satin uh, cast across the paintwork and the shininess and the other plastics. Uh, not plastic, sorry, fairings, because they're made of metal. In fact, hang on, well, that one's metal, that one's metal. Is this one metal? No, that one's plastic. Okay, fair enough. Oh, something I did forget to mention, which was worth saying, because it could be a bit annoying. I mean, I live with a DRZ, which has got this exact setup, but basically there is a, a key in the frame head to be able to lock the steering lock on, uh, because the ignition's down here, they're not connected. As I say, I have a bike that's set up like that. It's old school, it is a bit annoying, but it kind of is the way it is because of the way the bike is. Oh, I should also mention, of course, sorry, the bar and mirrors. They do actually work. Uh, there is a bit of vibration in the bars, quite large sort of vibrations, not high-pitched ones uh, that come with having a big twin like this. Uh, but they generally work quite well. They don't make the bike any narrow, uh, any wider. They kind of aren't as bad as the up ones here, but I could see a lot of people taking these off and, uh, and just relying on doing shoulder checks. But yeah, they do work okay. I honestly see this as the perfect bike for someone who wants to ride a motorcycle for all of the feel of it, all of the, the escapism, the joy, the, ex uh, the exploring, the adventuring, all that sort of stuff. And maybe even, so, you know, some sort of throwback history to what we had before. It's nice to see that even at this point, we are referencing back to the, the true early days of motorcycling. And, you know, when things were being innovated and created by the people that rode them to make those bikes do the things that they wanted more. Uh, yeah, I think that gives you my conclusion on this bike. It's really nice. Thank you very much to Triumph UK for lending me this one. Please remember to hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. If you really are looking at getting one of these, consider watching the other videos I've done where I was doing all of the testing that's made me come to the conclusions that I've come to. I don't just say something without testing it. That's why I spend an entire like week, 10 days testing and trying and experiencing for myself. Uh, and if you want to help support this channel so I can continue to do this, then please consider joining my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm very soon going to hit 100,000 subscribers, and at this point in, point in time, 0.3% of the audience uh, make this channel possible. Um, it really is that important. Anyway, catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.